Hey everyone, my name's Austin, also known as Mad Gigabit. Now uh, this isn't my typical setup as you see, I'm kind of hunched over here. I got giant whiteboard here. So, it's going to become Whiteboard Wednesday. So, what we are going to talk about today is how you can BGP, aka bring in your own IP addresses and announce them yourself. Basically, this works for anyone on a broadband connection, whether that is still fiber. I mean, because fiber is kind of like broadband, in, in all honesty. Uh, it's a residential connection, and it's not enterprise grade. Typically, internet service providers will not let you bring in your own IP addresses. But I found out there is a way you can do that. And we've engineered it, and I'm going to show you it. So, basically, what it's going to come down to is this. At the end of the day, you need to get IP addresses, and you need to get these from your organization's, uh, more or less your region's organization. So in the North America, we have a company called ARIN. ARIN stands for the American Registry for Internet Numbers. You also have RIPE and some other ones as well. Basically, they are given some sort of allocations of IP addresses. And these IP addresses, they can, you have to have, you don't have to, for our, for what we do engineering wise, you don't have to have uh, a block of say 24, which is 200 and like, I think it's 254 IPv4s. You know, you could get 23s, you could get 22s, all the way down to a slash 16 which is 65,535, I think, IP addresses. But for this way as well, you can also get like a slash 29 and use five IPs, okay? So it really just depends on how many IPs you want. Typically, you can go through Aaron and get these. However, you can also come over to a company called IPXO. IPXO is basically the eBay world of getting IP addresses. You tell them, hey, I want a slash 24, and I want them through this. Try to keep them in your organization, like your region. It makes it so much easier. But um, what it is is I pay these guys like 100 bucks a month for a slash 24. So I'm paying these people. Basically, a seller on IPXO has said, hey, I'm going to sell a slash 24. We'll sell the contract till 2025. Okay, cool. I pay these guys 100 bucks a month to use these, and then these IP addresses I can set up as an ASN. Basically, you can point these to a ASN, an Autonomous Synchronization Network, ASN. Basically, the way it works is we go through a company called Data Wagon. Data Wagon has a Chicago and a New York node. What they will do is you point, you po say I buy a uh, slash 24, there's 254 IP addresses. What I will do is I pay them, then I pay, I think it's $7 through IPXO to then point to the ASN of Data Wagon. So pretty much what I'm doing here is I pay them, get these IPs. I then tell, hey, IPXO, I want to point them to Data Wagon. Data Wagon says, cool, here's the ASN you point them to, and it gets sent over to Data Wagon in, say, New York. You can do this with Voltor. Uh, there's a company called BGP. You can punch this in on your, on your browser. It's called uh, BGP.Services, I believe, or BGP.Service. And there's a list of global BGP providers, and they'll say how much you gotta pay. Now, I pay these guys 60 bucks a month for the server. I don't have to pay them for the BGP, nothing like that. And I pay them 100 bucks a month for a 10 gig port, and it's a true 10 gig. So, we're just going to say that this here is the internet. This here is the internet. Basically, what happens is we have Data Wagon over here. We have Data Wagon, and then we have, we'll just say Rackify, okay? And I'll, I'll scoot this over so you guys can see it. 
So we have Data Wagon, which is in Chicago, and Rackify, which is in Pittsburgh. Well, what comes down to this is, okay, cool. Through all, all of this stuff, okay, all of this is coming into Chicago. How the heck do we get it to Pittsburgh? That's the question everyone wants to know. How do you get that into Pittsburgh? Well, it's pretty simple. So we have a server. I'm not the best artist. I apologize. But we have a server, okay? And we'll even say server. And it's running ESXi, which is a virtualization platform. You can use Hyper-V. We suggest this. We then have a thing in the cloud, quote-unquote, in the cloud. It's a VM running Router OS. Router OS is made by Microtech. Basically, what we have set up is... We have all of this coming in to one IP. We have it being static routed to the WAN IP of the VM. Then what we did is we set up a GRE tunnel. So imagine this tunnel. This is a tunnel. Basically what we did is we went in and we set up this GRE. GRE. This acts as a VPN. It's a site-to-site -site VPN. So, because we did not co-locate, we went the other other route. We just get a server over here. So we set up a GRE tunnel, okay? And mind you, this is 1.1.1. We do have a micro tick on site here. So we'll do this. This is a micro tick. And let's say we get 10.10 uh, 10 point, 10 point, you know, we'll just say this, 10.10.10.0 slash 24, okay? We route all of this over the GRE tunnel, okay? And I'll have, I, I can always help with this because uh, we do consulting services. So that comes over, okay? Let's say we have 2.2.2.2, which is what our amazing ISP or upstream gave us. Cool. So on this GRE tunnel, we'll put their endpoint, okay? So if we come over here, so you're going to have 1.1.1.1, 2.2. These are the ISPs. These are the WANs, okay? Basically, what we got to do is we got to point this so it talks over to here, and then this will become 10.10.10.1. That means 0 0.2 through 0.254 are usable. Honestly, it's not that hard. A lot of people think it's a super hard thing to do. It's not. And so the, what we do is we say to the Microtech, because this is running router OS, we say... Okay, any of these any of these on this LAN, it basically becomes one big LAN. This is a quick and dirty way to do it. Any number on that LAN needs to route to this. So we then point that to go there. How do we do it? Through the GRE tunnel. This acts as basically this here. Does it basically just immediately get sent over? It doesn't get logged, nothing. This is strictly just as our route in. And this is, I don't know, four or 500 miles, maybe 300 miles, something like that away. That's Chicago, this is Pittsburgh. And we're able to do this in near instantaneously. And no one's even the wiser. Now, we could always BGP through two different providers on site here. It's very expensive to do through these providers. And also, what does Chicago have? They have two things. One, they have an additional layer of DDoS protection. So this here, this GRE tunnel and this, this is its own DDoS protection in addition to us. So it gives us two DDoS protection layers. In addition, that also helps us expand if we need to in the future, okay? Because... Let's say this. Let's say we are moving from downtown Pittsburgh out to the outskirts or vice versa, whatever the case is. Okay? We could take this 
anywhere. We can take it anywhere. We take that micro tick, we can throw it up in New York. We could take it down to Miami. I love Miami. <laughs> Key West be exact. We could take this micro tick anywhere we want in the world. As long as we have that WAN set up and we know what IP this is and have access to this VM, all we do is just change the allowed address to the GRE and we can literally have our network on the go. We can take all 255 IPs with us on the go. I'm telling you guys, follow up for more. I'm going to do more in depth on this if you want to know, but this here. This is Whiteboard Wednesday, guys. My name's Austin, also known as Mad Gigabit.